Hey everyone, we're back and we're going to move on to the 19th century. We're talking about exterior home styles. Um, this next slide is actually going to be once this video is completed, this is where I'm going to put it and then it will continue on with your notes. So in the 19th century, we had two major periods that came through when it comes to the influences of our homes. We had the Romantic Revival period, which included the Greek Revival, Gothic Revival, and then the Italian style. So the Greek Revival and the Gothic Revival, um, they brought back some of the looks that we've already seen before. And so we'll get into more details about that. And then for the Victorian um, period, we had the Mansard style, which looks a lot like the apartments right next to school. And then we also had the Queen Anne, which if you guys can kind of picture the school's parking lot, um, think about the house that's right across the street, the pretty blue one, that is a Queen Anne style. So we're going to get into some more details about those. So the Greek Revival should look a little familiar to you guys. The Greek Revival and the early Classical Revival, which is the style from the, the last style from the 18th century that we went over, they are extremely similar. Um, some professionals in the, in the housing exterior industry will even say that they can almost be interchangeable. It's just kind of their, their kind of popularity. So you've got a still like that Southern style with the two story porches on there. We know this is the porticos. And then the house was typically um, rectangular shape, again, with the symmetrical windows. It's very, very similar. Some will say that the slight difference could be the fact that its columns were Greek influence, were early classical, were a little bit of a Roman influence, um, but they're very similar. They also had the gable roof, which was usually emphasized. There's a cornice sometimes on here. Um, in this sample where you see Baby Yoda at, there is no cornice on here. Um, they had the pilasters in the front of the house. That's not these. Those are actual real functioning columns. We're talking, if you look at Baby Yoda's ear, we're looking at the pilasters right in there. And this house doesn't really have majorly big ones. Um, they had elaborate entrances. So again, you came into the main door. It's wider. It's a big... Here's the emphasis, and then again, the Greek columns right here. So the Gothic Revival had um, the common design features are typically the pointed arches and circular windows. Um, they, if you, sorry, if you guys hear the microphone a lot, it's because I'm trying to hold my cat and she's trying to eat the microphone sometimes. Um, but they're, they're kind of what made them stood out. It's the fact that they did have these pointed arches up here. These are actually pretty mild ones. There's other ones that have really tall, skinny pointed arches and then the circular windows up there. We've got a little one right there and really that's more of a fan light cause it's that half circle, but they are known for having a legit full circle window. Uh, they were often built of wood, but the wood would be textured and look to made to look like stone. And the reason behind that is because stone was too expensive and the people who were actually like had the skills to do the stone work, we called them stonemasons, they, there, there weren't many around. It was kind of a, a lost art. And so there weren't a ton of people to do it. And then it was just really expensive to get them to do it and then really expensive to actually pay for the stone. So instead, they decided that we can get the wood and we can make the wood look like stone. They also introduced the gingerbread design, and this is what they're kind of what they're known for. So, yeah, you had the pointed arches and circular windows, uh, but really they're known for the gingerbread design. So if you look up here, uh, typically you can know a Gothic Revival house when it has this type of decorative and it, this is usually out of wood. Uh, it looks like kind of like icing on a gingerbread house. Um, so it usually trimmed the whole house um, up through the roof and then over here on the side roof as well had some and that's that um, gingerbread which is that lacy looking cut out um, made out of wood and it's placed along all the gables in the roof line. So instead of cornice they had gingerbread. The Italian style um, they introduced villas and estates. Uh, they typically had overhanging hip roofs. They also sometimes dealt with flat roofs uh, instead and then they were known for their cornices. Their cornices are pretty prominent. You can see them right here. And then this one has a very, very low uh, hip roof, like a very kind of more of a flatter one, not really as much of a pointed one or one for height. But they were kind of tall, like very squared off houses right here, rectangular houses. And then they had, again, cornices all through there, cornices up and around there. 
So the Manstern style is actually, if you guys um, can kind of picture yourselves in this cool parking lot and you look across the parking lot into the apartments, this is what all these apartments are shaped like. Um, it's a French influence. And then it was called the Mansard style, also known as the Second Empire. We'll refer to it as a Mansard. Uh, they also introduced, so not only was the house a particular style, they also introduced the roof, which was called the same thing. So it's the Mansard house with the Mansard roof. Uh, basically, it's a roof that has two slopes on all the sides. Uh, the lower slope is really steep and the upper slope is, slope is almost flat. So in here, this would actually be living spaces like this would, could be someone's room. And I know it looks kind of curved from the outside, but from the most part, it was still pretty squared off in there. It wasn't any low. It was like a regular normal height as well. So if there happened to be like a porch right here and the person were to look out, they could actually touch the wooden shingles. Whereas like if you're thinking like an apartment, this floor right here wouldn't be able to touch the wooden shingles. But it's just a square, boxy roof um, and house style. The last style we're going to look at is one of my personal favorites. It's called the Queen Anne. It has a very, very short popularity era. It's only about 10 years or so. Um, it is probably one of the more recognizable styles of the Victorian area. So it included the irregular steep roofs. Um, it had ornamental gables, so it had very decorative roofs, um, which would kind of be like up in this area, down over here. They also would use decorative wood shingles as siding. So instead of it just being regular siding like you see right here, which is a light blue, you would see them actually use more shingles on the front of the roofs where all the other houses we looked at, it's always been regular siding. Same thing right down here. All this is shingles when before, it was just plain siding. And then lastly, probably their most notable feature, and the one I want you guys to remember, is the wraparound porches. So you can get up through here, and then this porch would actually go probably across the front and the back, and then sometimes, um, or I'm sorry, the sides, and sometimes it actually go three quarters of the way all the way around. So you would have the front yard, the side yard, and then the backyard would actually have the um the whole porch in there. So again, if you can remember standing in the parking lot, like as you're pulling out of the school's parking lot, the house that's directly across the street, that's also kind of a light blue like this. Um, this is that style of house that they have and they, decor they decorate it a lot for the holidays. So your assignment, just like you guys have seen before, um, use your notes on the internet to answer the following questions. So these you can drag and drop. It is an example of each of the five styles we just went over. You're going to tell me, does it um, go to the Romantic Revival or is it Victorian? And then you're going to answer the questions like you normally have before. When you're done, make sure you hit submit. Um, or if you can't figure out how to submit it through, remember with Google Slides, you have to exit out of the actual slide itself and then go to the assignments page on Classroom to hit submit. If you can't remember how to do that or you think it's not going to save, you can just send me an email saying, hey, I've completed my assignment and I'll go take a look at it and grade it. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to um, email me or make sure you jump onto the WebExes that will be happening later this week.